I'll be talking about uh, like a smart replacement for minimized hashing in the context of uh, near neighbor search. So, the data that we are observing today over the web is typically very high dimensional and very sparse. And the reason for it is the sort of the wide adoption of the bag of the words technique, which thinks of which takes the whole huge dictionary of space and thinks of documents as the elements contained in that or from that set. So the universe is usually very big. It's usually some it's usually higher order shingles, which are like huge in number and the documents are typically have very less number of elements in it, so it's usually only have hundreds or typically thousands of non-zeros and the data is in the dimension could blow up in billions and trillions. And the most of the information is actually contained in the sparsity structure of the vector rather than the magnitude. So usually people consider the binary approximations of the vector as like in most of the big data systems including like symbol. So a popular measure of similarity between these documents or representation is resemblance. And uh, a set can also be equivalently thought of as a binary vector, which, just, uh, for example, I can put a one at all the location which is contained in the set, and I get a binary representation, and it's equivalent. And uh, the similarity measure resemblance is just the ratio of the intersection of two sets divided by the union. So it just counts how much is common between them and normalized by whatever is there. Minimize hashing is a standard uh, hashing technique which is widely adopted in practice. And uh, the idea behind minimize hashing is you use a, we use a random permutation pi. We can think of it as a mapping. And if we are given two sets, S1 and S2, what we do is we first apply that permutation to the set S. So if you think of the permutation as a mapping, I'm applying that permutation to every element of the set. What I get is an another permuted set. And then I just look at whatever is the minimum element after this permutation. Now what is a very simple probability argument tells that the probability that the probability under the randomization of the permutation that these two minimum values agree for two different sets is exactly equal to the resonance similarity between them. And uh, note that this does not depend on the dimensionality of the data line. It's independent of the dimensionality, and that is the reason we see that most of the locality sensitive hashing algorithms which uses these hashing are like have guarantees which is independent of the dimensions. So here is another view, like if you like the data matrix view of the vectors. So I can think of each of the representation of the binary vectors as S1, S2, and S3, and this is my data matrix. I apply the permutation over these features. I apply the permutation over these feature, and what I get is this permuted set. And then I start from Z1 and look at the minimum index of the non-zero element. So for example, in this S1, the minimum index of non-zero is two. So one my min hash is just two for S1. For S2 and S3, this is Z1. And uh, the, from this result, we know that the probability that this signature matches is exactly R. So this actually defines an indexing scheme. So here is like the locality sensitive hashing algorithm in a nutshell. It's just a tie example to illustrate how this helps in doing a sub How is this proportional to R? Because if I take the same set twice, then the probability of the same two values is very low. It's exponentially low. No, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. What? If I take assume the extreme case, S1 equals S2. OK. I think Two okay. So it's the same permutation pi over both the sections. Oh, I see, I see. So I'm drawing the permutation at random okay. and then applying to all of them. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now this defines an indexing scheme. And here is a toy example of how this works in the case of locality sensitive hashing. So imagine I take four permutation. Here the locality sensitive hashing algorithms have two parameters. One is the number of concatenation and what is the number of hash tables that I'm going to build. So here I'm using two concatenation and two hash tables. Imagine that my min hash is just taking four values, which is 0, 1, and 3. So suppose I took the data point number 8 and apply four minwise hashing to it, and what I get is 
the first one is 0, the second one is 0. So I place 8 in this bucket. My third hash value is say 3 and say again 3. So I place 8 in this, this hash table in the second bucket. So this is how I will process all the data point in my collection. Now suppose I am given a query, then I will apply those same four hash functions. And suppose I get 3, 1, 0 and 1. And then I look at the binary representation. And so I find this is 1, 1, 0, 1. So I'll probe this bucket. And this is 0, 0, and 0, 1. So I'll probe this bucket. So now remember that we know that the hash collision is actually an indicator of a similarity between the query and the element. So I'm more likely to find similar elements to the query in the corresponding buckets than, than random. And so this idea can actually be converted into a sublinear proof, rigorous proof, by appropriately tuning this parameter alpha and beta. And this was the original 98 paper of so-called the locality sensitive hash. And this property is also known as the LSH property. So one thing to note is that if the parameters are alpha and beta, then I need alpha, beta, different hash functions. So the algorithm is very nice because it gives eliminates the requirement for doing a linear scale, but then it comes with the problem of costly pre-processing. Remember, we need to compute alpha into beta hash signatures. Typically, for theory, we need alpha is of the order of log n, and beta is n to the power rho, for some rho less than 1. And as if you remember, then for minwise hashing, I need to first process a full permutation over the data, and then compute the minimum. So if I assume that d is the number of non-zero, then this is a big O of D operation. So if I am computing alpha and beta different hash function, then this is big O of D times alpha and beta hash evaluations. And in theory, if I'm doing a near neighbor search, then I need to evaluate beta number of points for actual, if I want to, if I want to evaluate actually beta number of points. And so that is like, the re step is actually big O of D. So the whole query time is actually dominated by the processing of query computation. One thing that is uh, there is, if you look at the process of minwise hashing, we are taking a whole vector, shuffling it, and then only looking at the minimum. So if we are only looking at the minimum, it ought to be wasteful because we are not looking at what, what, what is happening like on the other end of the data. So there were other ideas, even back in 98, the idea was to, instead of using one minimum, just use k different minimums. So for example, if you remember that we use only the first index of first index of the first non-zeros, here we can use, say for example, here we are using three. So for my bottom three sketch for S1 will be two, four, seven, and similarly S2 and S3. But this cannot be used for the process that I showed you for constructing near neighbors, or for constructing tables for near neighbor search. It is because that it does not, the collision does not imply, is not an indicator of high similarity. For example, if we see S2 and S3, they are almost identical except at this point. So there is a collision here, but there is no collision afterwards. And so it's, it does not satisfy the LSH problem. So the, another scheme which comes close is something, is one permutation hashing, which uses the idea of binning. So remember we have a vector, and say after shuffling the vector, this is what the configuration is. And I divide the vector into five bins. Now, instead of just looking at the minimum, I will look at the minimum inside these bins. And what is good about this is that if the bin is not simultaneously empty, then the collision event has probability equal to R, just like minimize hashing. So the collision is an indicator of similarity, but conditional on the fact that the bin should not be empty. Well, this looks good because we are at least able to generate more than once one signature, and we need to see if we really need to take care of the empty bins. But actually, it turns out that we really cannot use, it becomes undeterministic to decide which bin to use for the hash signatures. For instance, if I decide to use bin 1 signature for indexing, first of all, I don't know the query in advance. So I'm not sure whether the query is empty on this bin. And since there are a large number of data sets, there, all, there will always be significant amount of data points which are empty on bin 1. So for those data points which are empty on bin 1, and if the query is empty on bin 1, I am not sure if I am doing the right thing. So, 
So that's given any bin, we can expect a lot of elements to be empty and we cannot determine the indexing scheme. So before even I go and tell you what the solution is, whether it matter or not. So the one thing that we can try is, we can think of, let's say for the timing, let's say that even if both of them are empty, it's an indicator of a high similarity between them. So that's the empty equal scheme. We can just assign a fixed special number to all the empty ones. The another way is we can say, well, if they are empty, then probably is not an indicator of similarity. And so we'll assign every time we see an empty bin, we assign a new random number, and that's empty, empty, not equal. So here is the implementation of LSS scheme on news 20 data set. I'm using the, these many number of tables, and I'm using alpha, which is the number of concatenation, which is equal to 10, and I have results for more of them. And I'm plotting the recall of all the neighbors which greater than the threshold of similarity, threshold of 0.5, and here I'm uh, plotting the number of points retrieved. I can see that the behavior of empty equal and empty not equal is very different from the behavior of minwise hashing. And well, it is expected because I'm saying that this, the simultaneous empty is an indication of similarity where it could just be because of an indicator of sparsity. And so it actually retrieves everything and no wonder it gives better recall. Whereas empty not equal scheme just does the opposite. So it seems that it matters and we need some better way to fix it. So here is what our proposal is. So what we want to do is we want to make the simultaneous empty bin behaves like a randomly chosen non-empty bin. <coughs> we know that non-empty bins has the collision probability equal to R. And if we can make this happen, then we have essentially filled the gaps in the right way. So here is those bins, uh, the, the configuration shown on a circle. And the idea is that if I have a simultaneously empty bin, I will keep moving right until I find a bin which is not zero. And I will borrow its signature with some offset. So for example, if I look at bin 5, which was empty, I go to bin 0, it's again empty. I go to bin 1, I find bin 2. So I will carry it bin 2 here with some offset C. And I will carry bin 2 here with some offset. And I'll add the offset twice, because I'm doing it at traveling a distance of 2. Now, the thing is, it's not difficult to show that this bin will behave very much like this bin. Because it, so the, these simultaneous empty bins are behaving, are behaving exactly like the closest simultaneously not empty bin in the clockwise direction. So, so, and the permutation is random. So this uh, this counts like choosing randomly selecting non-empty bins for the empty ones. So it, it's not difficult to show that after the reassignment, the collision probability is exactly R, which satisfies the LSH property. We can also analyze the variance. And in fact, the variance is not really very bad in the sense that it is, uh, it's in fact, on some real data set, it does even slightly better than minimize hashing for the job of estimation. Now, how does the performance looks like? Well, it exactly mimics minimize hashing. You can see that uh, I'm doing the same thing. Here I'm plotting the number of tables. This is alpha equal to 10, alpha equal to 8. This is MNIST data set. And I'm plotting the recall for threshold 0.5. And this is the count of the elements that I retrieve. And I can see that the proposed behavior exactly mimics minimize hashing, which is not surprising because I know that the collision probability of the new scheme is also equal to R, just like minimize hashing. This is the scenario on the web spam data set, pretty much same. This is a little dense data set, so you see that those empty equal and empty not equal schemes are performing a little bit, are performing very much similar to minimize hashing, but then there is a deviation when you, once you start changing the number of like concatenations. And we also have the result on the news 20 data set, same behavior. So what do we do? Like, so remember we need to compute alpha beta hash evaluation, which and our procedure requires processing one permutation, binning, and then refilling the bins, which is just a big O of D operation. So this computing this alpha beta hash signatures can be done in big O of D plus alpha beta. Now, if you compare it to big O of D alpha beta, which is what minimize hashing requires, it's a huge saving, especially when D is large. For example, if you see the web spam data set, for computing roughly like 1,000 evaluation, it's like it's just way more than what we require. 
And uh, in fact, we also get a sort of an algorithmic improvement in the traditional LSH because the query the query complexity time dominates the total time. So the conclusion is the minimize hashing is very costly, and uh, especially in the task of near neighbor search. And in the task of near neighbor search, it's like it's, it's a little bit different that we don't need sparsity of sketches. So one permutation hashing was sparse but we need to densify those. And the scheme which we propose, densify those sketches in an unbiased fashion, thereby we obtain a very fast processing scheme, which very much behaves like minimize hashing, but at the same time is very cheap to compute. And as a consequence, we also have a runtime improvement over minimize hashing based in 